Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments in God's Word. Thank you for joining me this week as we've been unpacking the book of Revelation, special book, special blessing for those who honor it, hear it, heed it. Thank you so much. I, I've enjoyed this week, and I hope you have learned a lot about the book of Revelation. And let's close out the book of Revelation. Remember, we divided the book of Revelation into four fundamental sections. So I've given you a lot of information, but don't forget those four sections. The first section is a vision of God who's ruling. A second section is a vision of grace because Christians aren't always being faithful during times of persecution. Third vision is a vision of government, two governments. There's only two kinds of governments, the kingdom and the empire. Fundamentally, that's, and, and today you got kingdom people who believe in kingdom politics, in which you close the gap between the powerful and the powerless, the wealthy and the and the, and the poor, that's kingdom. And you've got uh, uh, empire politics, which believes in war, domination, the gap between the rich and the poor through public policy. That's what, what's going on, a fight between governments. And now, and the, and the good news is that the government of Jesus Christ is going to reign, he's going to win. Jesus will defeat the emperor. And then finally, after a vision of God, a vision of, of, of grace for churches and a vision of government, you have a vision of glory in which Jesus is worshiped because Jesus is creating a new world. Not only does he defeat the old world, but Jesus wants to create the new world. This is the kind of world that we should be trying to create in our world today in the United States of America. And it's a, it's a, it's a vision of glory of a bright new world and a bright new city. Notice what it says in Revelation chapter two, first of all, the bright, the bright new world. It says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth and the first heaven and the first earth has passed away and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride beautifully dressed. Now, this is not to be taken literal. This is symbolism. What it is saying is that God is going to create a new world. I have a book in my hand, and uh, I want you to see this book. It's called The World Made, The Word Made Flesh. It is a con very contemporary application of the entire New Testament. And this is uh, volume three, but there's two, three volumes and you might be able to order this on amazon.com, but it's a great book and it helps you to contemporize these passages. And look at what it says. Let me read this to you uh, in the Word Made Flesh uh, translation. Then came the beautiful part. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The old arrangement was a goner. I saw a new city being lowered down from God, dressed as a bride, spruced up for her husband. So the old arrangement was gone. In other words, just like we have seen some change because the old order, the old arrangement under Trump is gone and a new arrangement is coming into pass, hopefully in which the, the, the jobs bill, the infrastructure work. This is basically what the book of Revelation is talking about. It's about government and how some governments oppress the poor and some governments try to bring opportunities to the poor. And the Christians were the groups that were the poor. The Christians were, were, were poor and destitute and excluded. We flipped the script in our day and we've made Christianity popular. We've made Christianity the winner's religion. But but when you're living for Jesus, you're not going to be the winner. You, 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 when you're probably going to be oppressed, you're going to be exploited because you're going to defend people who don't have a voice. That's what it means to be a Christian. So uh, it's, it says, uh, uh, so he sees this new heaven and this new earth. And uh, it goes on to say, and the, the angel flew, flew me to a high mountain, showed me the new Jerusalem. So go back to, you, to, you, to the outline of a new world, a brand new city. Uh, verse nine says, one of the angels who had seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, come, I will show you the bride. And, but I want you to notice something. It says about this new city, go down to verse 11. It shone with the glory of God. The brilliance was like that of very precious jewels like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels on the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes and et cetera, et cetera. In, in other words, what I want you to see is that this city 
there, there's, it says uh, like the bridge was like that a very precious jewels and you know the city of 12 gates to the city the streets of gold the the, the walls of jasper the gates of pearls which is on the book of revelation you know what that's saying that's not saying that literally that the gates are made of pearls and the streets are made of gold what that is saying is this is that the things that we fight over is so unimportant to god that god uses it as building material as building material. It's so unimportant. So let me ask you a question. If your house was made of gold and you lived in the hood, what would happen to your house? Do you think people would be around your house chipping some of that gold? You better believe it. Some would even probably chip it so they can have a gold too. But listen to me, they'd be chipping that gold because they need money. What this is saying is the things that we fight over on earth are used, my God, as building material in heaven. And in the in the uh the word makes flesh translation, it says the angel flew to a high mountain and showed me the new Jerusalem having the glory of God appearing as precious jewels, jewels. The city had a wall around it, and 12 and 12 gates representing the 12 tribes, three gates to each side. There were 12 foundation stones uh upholding the city, each was named for one of the apostles. The city was really fantastic. He's talking about a new city. Where's all the poverty in America? It's in the hood. It's in the city, the abandoned city, until you gentrify and then gentrify, and then you just move the poor to someplace else. The point he's trying to make is, is that God is creating a new arrangement, a new world, a new city. Now, that's what the book of Revelation basically is really all about. It's about a timeless fight that always takes place because of the greed that's in people's heart. And because there will always be greed and a need to dominate, there will, the, what you read in the book of Revelation will take place in every age, in every era. I don't care what era you're in. I don't care what country you go to. I don't care what society you're in. You always have people who want to dominate other people, who want to hurt and exploit and take advantage of weak people. Those who do that represent empire. Those who say, look, I'm gonna fight for equity. I'm gonna fight for those who don't have a voice. That's kingdom. And we're fighting this war because human beings ruin the world through policies. We're, we're messed up as a country right now and we're at each other's throats. It's rooted in policies of domination, policies of exploitation that is the, we've ruined it. But it's Satan who rules it. Satan rules it, re ruin it. But what this book of Revelation is, is God's going to write it. God's going to rescue us. God's going to fix it. God's going to create a new arrangement. And we should be working to help God create that new arrangement where there's justice for everyone. And we remain faithful to that, even if we're put on an island of Patmos like John was for his faithfulness to Christ. So remember, author is John, audience is the churches of Asia. The alarm is government oppresses people. The answer is Christians must resist and Christians must fight back. Application is what took place in the first century is taking place in the 21st century and will take place in every century, but ultimately Christ will win. Now someone's gonna ask, well, what about the end of the world? What's going to happen to the end of the world? What's going to happen? Uh, the thousand year reign and the, the premillennial and, and what's going to happen to the world? I don't know. And the reason I don't know is because the book of Revelation was not written to answer those type of questions. We've read into the book of Revelation those type of issues, but that's not what the book of Revelation is about. It is a coded book written to oppressed Christians in Asia. And these oppressed Christians were oppressed by the government, just like blacks were oppressed in South Africa and Jews oppressed in Germany. And black, especially dark skinned black males are oppressed in the United States today. That God is on the side of the oppressed and that the empire with all of its might and power has a bow with no arrow in it. And that the king, 
Christ will reign. He is worthy because he is able to take the scroll out of God's hands and open up the seals and that the savior will ultimately win. You know, there are all types of systems in the, about the book of Revelation, you know, um, you know, pan-millennialist, post-millennialist, the reign of Christ, when will Christ reign? Christ, Christ, uh, uh, will come before the millennial. That's premillennialism. Christ will come after the millennial, the thousand year of peace. That that's postmillennialism. Uh, a millennialist, or you don't take any of it literal. That's a millennialism. I'm not postmillennialist. I'm not premillennialist. I'm not a millennialist. I am panmillennialist. Now, if postmillennialism means that Christ will come back after the thousand year reign, or that the end of the world will take place after the thousand year reign, if premillennialism is that Christ will come and then the thousand year reign, or amillennialist, you know, let me tell you what a panmillennialist is. The panmillennialist is this I'm going to leave it in the God hand. It's going to all pan out in the end. And when it all pans out in the end, all it's going to mean is this that God's going to win, that you're on the winning team. There was a fella who used to watch basketball games. Um, he would he would uh, tape the game, and then after he would tape the game, he would because uh, he had to go somewhere or he had to work. He would tape the game, and then he would go find out what the score is and then watch the game. And someone would ask him. They said, "Well, why tape the game? Why don't Why don't you just tape the game and watch the game and don't wait to?" and wait to find out what the score is at the end of the game. He said, no, I'll tape it, find out who won, then watch it. He said, I tape it and then find out who won so that when I'm watching the game, if our team looks like it's down, I've got confidence because I already know what the outcome's gonna be. And this is what the Breck of Revelation is trying to tell us. Know what the outcome's gonna be. The outcome is this, regardless of how difficult life gets, the outcome is this. You already know what the outcome is going to be. God wins. In Genesis, he's the creator. God is the creator. In Revelation, God is the controller. God bless you. Thank you for being with me this week. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this study in the book of Revelation. We pray for a new heaven and a new earth, a new world, a new arrangement. Bless, we pray, your people. Help us to work towards that end. Help us to be kingdom citizens and avoid the pressure to be empire people. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless your hearts. Thank you for being with me this entire week. And uh, tomorrow is the Lord's Day, and uh, I hope you'll join us. Miss Crystals, she begins our worship service with a pre-worship experience beginning at 9 o'clock. Then 9.30 worship begins. We're going to have a wonderful time. So you join us and invite someone to be with us tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you for being with me again. Don't forget also, if you don't have a church home, contact the St. Stephen Church. Email us, newstartsclab.org. And don't forget uh, tomorrow's worship. And uh, don't forget also that during COVID-19, uh, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane. And if you can, stay home. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.